All right. We're finishing up uh, number two in our uh, the original Star Wars series. It's sort of part two. And uh, the weapons of our warfare. Um, there are seven things that God gives us to do battle in, in our daily Christian life, in our service to the Lord. And these are dynamic, dynamic weapons that we have. Um, this morning when I've had my just I'm up and in the car for the first time, and I've told you, that's sort of like clear my mind time. I oftentimes reach to push the radio button on, and I say, wait a minute, no, that's clutter. It doesn't matter who's on it, what I'm listening to, it's clutter. And I, I was thinking about the weapons that God has given to us, and there was a risk that I probably have not shared with you to this point, that we look at, at praise as a weapon. We look at the word of God as a weapon. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, when I show back up in two weeks, it's the blood of Jesus Christ is number three. And that's where, that's where we're going with that. And all seven of these, I want you to understand that yes, these are weapons, but in the same time, they're all joys. Think about that a minute. Our joy and the things that we have in the Lord are the weapons that we use in the evil one. When we're joyful and praising God, he doesn't have, Satan doesn't have our mind. When, we're, when we pray and, and cleanse our heart and we do good in our actions and we're serving the Lord, we're, in, we're defeating Satan and countering Satan, and yet we're rejoicing and it chases them away. But a weapon that we have is rejoicing. That was our first one. Joy, rejoicing, praise, praise, praise. And the second one is the word of God. What I'm trying to do with this lesson, I feel the Lord, that as I wrote it, that I just want to give this as ammunition to you. I want to encourage you to do something and maybe get, do, go, get going back to something that we all used to do, reading the word of God daily, memorizing scripture, putting it in our hearts, and we're going to conclude with some ideas on that today, and that's the tail end of everything. So if you're brand new with us today, I am thrilled that you're here. I'm just a simple folk. I'm just, I'm, just do what I say and we'll get along, and, <laughs> and, and right? That's, that always fits in well, but uh, just seriously, I'm, we thank the Lord for any of our visitors each week, and God bless you, and, and you're part of us today, and uh, you're part of us now, and we thank the Lord for you. Um, but, and to, the, to all of us that are here, God has wonderful things for us in his word. God's got great things in the word for us. So I want to dig into some things. Here's our memory verse, 2 Corinthians 10.4. Say it with me, please. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The strongholds are not the Democrats or the Republicans or the public school system or the abortionists. Those are not the strongholds it's talking about there. It's talking about our minds, the things in our heads, the, thing, the, the depression, the discouragement, the, we get beat up. The evil thoughts we have, lewd thoughts, issues that we do, things that we get in our mind, the clutter we get there that we can't see our way out, we box ourselves in and it becomes strongholds. Satan gets a foothold in our mind and we can't get rid of it. And that's what this verse is all about in our series. The power of the word of God. If you just pulled the lesson sheet, we're over on how far are we? About page three, four, three? No, you just have to count. Three? Three? Get over in page three or four and find Hebrews 4, 12. For the word of God is alive and, and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. All right, you should have this little grid past that verse, and that takes up some more space so that you probably can find it a little quicker. Those are the Greek words, uh, or the English words that we have, and that is the Greek or the original language translated out. And so when we have back here, the word of God is alive, 
and, and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. Here's what it's talking about. When you see the word quick back there, it means it's alive and breathing. The word of God is a living, is a living thing. And you find that out. Just read it. Just listen to the preaching of it today. In the, in the message, isn't Pastor Chad just, he's just like us. He's real easy. He's easy to understand. He doesn't get complex. He's where the rubber meets the road in our lives. And, and you could tell when he's sharing scripture, it became alive. And that's what it'll do, whether you hear it preaching or taught or you get in a Bible study or you're praying and you remember scripture, you read it. Things are going to come out. The word powerful means, the Greek word there is energase. Do you see the word, some sort of word up front there on inner? Energy. And that means active. The word of God's breathing and active and it penetrates and it breathes life. It, the spirit of God breathes life into our hearts and into our Christian living. <laughs> that is good. Yep. That is terrific stuff. And it changes. It's a discerner. It's a judge. It, it brings conviction to our heart of what we shouldn't be and helps us to point us to the direction of how we should be. Okay, now, up before this number four was we shared Jesus is the word. Then I said, then I shared with you how Jesus used the word of God as a weapon. And then I shared with you how Paul did and then how John did. And now here's how Peter used the word of God as a weapon. 2 Peter 1.21, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Talking about the word of God, prophecy in the Greek is defined as a discourse of divine intervention. Okay, let's, let me show you. Here we are, we're living our, li our life along here, and bam! There's an intervention of some kind. How about a cyclone hit? Would you say that that's an intervention in your life? If that, what hit, what hit Mozambique and the end whistles in their ministry, did they have some kind of an intervention? Yes. By the way, hurricanes, earthquakes, tornadoes, tidal waves, whatever they are, they are God's way of getting attention of people. Just to remind people that God, there is a God that God is around. They are not all for judgment. They really aren't for judgment to start with. They, they are to, get, to wake us up, to get us to stop back and to think a minute. Okay, now, when God says the word of God, it, when you get, and you're living your life along here, and you get into the word of God, and all of a sudden, bam, there's an intervention from God into your life, it can shift your course real quick. It can get your attention. It can touch your heart. It can soothe your soul. It can change your life. God's word has that way of doing it. Reason it's not happening, we ain't reading it. Reason it's not happening, we're not looking for it. You know, I'll be honest with you. There's one time, there were times in my life that the thing was, I'm, real, I'm a goal-oriented guy. Just give me a goal. and Say, you can't double dog dare you to do that. And go do that, and I'll go do it, just because it's a challenge to do it. And you remember what? You remember when they did all the walk through the Bible, and they all these different Christian organizations uh, that were on radio and TV. Jerry Falwell was one of them. He was new on TV, but everybody had sent you these monthly little booklets of reading your Bible through, and you got it ahead of time. You opened it up January, and you read it through, and had short little commentaries, great. And then they'd send it. There's always the envelope. Send the money back, but. Then you get, and they had some cool stuff in there. And so the goal was for me that I said, you know what, it's been a couple years since I've read the Bible from beginning to end in one year. And so I said, I'm going to do that. And so I, find my, I found myself doing that, doing that. I got through it that year. The next year I got to one of these guys that sent in and said, here's, here's the plan on how to read it through an entire year. We'll send you the booklet but we're also going to send you how to read it through five times this year. Well, there was the double dog dare. <laughs> My parents were, that year were having their 25th anniversary, and I 
was behind. And if you're trying to read your Bible through five times in one year, you don't want to get behind. I spent three and a half hour flight on an airplane just catching up, reading entire books at a time. I remember I was in Jeremiah and I was stuck in the middle of it. And I said, I'm going to go read the gospel one. And I read a gospel book and I did all this. And you know what? As I look back to that, that was sheer agony. And it should have been sheer joy. And I, I did it, but I didn't get anything out of it. Because I was more interested in making the goal than what did God have for me. And I don't know, I, I didn't resubscribe to that guy. I don't even know who it was. I don't want to know who had put, read your Bible through five. I want to know if he read it through. I could figure it out for you, a game plan, how you could read it through every month. Twelve times this year. But I'm not going to do that. But I can tell you how to do it. I can go figure it. Whatever. But this, uh, there's divine intervention in our lives. And the Holy Spirit moved these men along as he gave us a scripture. Wars of the world. Let's move it. I've got to, we have to finish today. All right, what are the wars going on? Bible tells us, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Unless I forget, I'm going to come to a section where we need to memorize God's word. It's, you see it, it's coming up. The verses that I, many of these verses I've pulled, I've memorized in the past. These are, this is a great starting point because these are great defensive and offensive weapons for the child of God. This is a great verse to memorize. And just pick these and look them up and put them on a card. One verse per card. Like put the verse and put the reference on the back. And just, just memorize them. There's no, there's no goal to, I've got to get 50 of these done or I'm not a super Christian. Get one done. And then move to the next one. And then review the first one. Human history is a continual battle of wars. Right now, there's, I've never lived my entire life without there being war somewhere on planet Earth, somewhere. Individuals fight another kind of war every day, and it's Christians, it's a spiritual battle. There's the ongoing battle between good and evil, angels and Satan. And I, I read this in a book. In preparation of this, they said, here's an insight. If you live in a city where satanic force is strong, you, the Christian, will struggle harder to live righteously. Think of New York City. How wicked, how evil, how it is, and how hard it would be for a child of God because the pre... The satanic influence is huge in the laws and the culture. Move to Chicago. Go to almost any big city and you will feel and you'll say, man, I just feel like there's an evil presence here. And you would be right. And to live there, if God called you that, and I saw this, I just got the first glimpse of it, and um, I know... At Times Square, they put up a gigantic right to, right to life. They put up newborns up on the big videotrons. They had to bring them in. The New York City wouldn't rent them, the owners of them. But at Times Square, they went ahead and they had an incredible rally, I believe it was yesterday. Yeah. Immense, huge. And they put newborn babies up, or babies almost ready to be born. New York State has a law that you can abort a child as they're being born. You can kill them. Just, you just kill them. I don't want them. And they were showing what they look like in the womb um, and how they develop. And they had great, they had great people there. They had Al Alveda King, the, 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 the niece of Martin Luther King spoke. She's a dynamic Christian woman. She is a dynamic Christian woman and so pro-life and pro-America and pro-right. She was there. The woman that starred in the movie was there. And what thrilled me was there was a preacher there, and they said he spoke 
and he is the pastor of the Times Square Church. I never heard of that. But praise God, there's a man of God there and a work going on right in the middle of Satan's fortress. And he's claiming victories and seeing people saved and great things are happening. And this is fabulous. But you know, many of the people, as those men and women prayed and they spoke, they talked about the battle going on and the fight that, that was going on and to join it and to get in there. Bible says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. We've looked at these verses earlier. The weapons of our warfare, the sword of the spirit, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you'll be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation. But here's the, here's the offensive weapon and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Everything else is de defense, but this is offense. The sword of the soldier talked about right here, that short sword to pick up the sword, which is the word of God. In the Greek, it's the gladius. It's a short, it's a, it's, I'm, I'm, just beat, I'm just fighting my way. I'm just one victory, one fight at a time, one victory at a time, one fight at a time, one victory at a time. Folks, there's no way we can destroy the entire abortion industry today. But we can fight one battle at a time. And one one's won, and you've won one, and you've won one, and you've won one. Now all of a sudden, we've got a foothold, and we're going to win some more, and we're going to win big but we got to win one at a time, one victory at a time in our lives. Sword of the Spirit, there's real power. It pulls down strongholds of Satan like a missile. Not only will it influence us, but it can, it, it, through prayer and the power of God, it can influence the lives of other people. I, I say this to you, and I'm, I'm humbled when he, said, when he said this. Do you remember Sean? He was a homeless guy I brought, if you were here, about a year ago now. He, and he's a safe guy, but he's really rough. He's got, he's, he's got it rough. Okay, he's, in, he's, found a, he's found a place to stay for 30 days up in Clearwater that homeless can rotate through there. And he's up there, and then he's going to catch him track, and he's going to go home. And I was there one the morning. He was talking to his mom. His mom's not, and he's got a brother up there. And he, I just listened to the car. He, did, he wanted me to. And he hung up, and I said, Sean, what do you do? He, he says, what if your mom doesn't want you to stay? He says, it's not hard if I'm on the street. I know what to do. But the, the thing was that he wanted to try to go home, but he couldn't. But he said, he, after we... After he hung up and we chatted and I walked a little bit and I came back by and he says, Dick, I want to tell you something. He says, all these people in here and all these people wherever I go, he says, he says, you are the most, you're the most Christian person that I've met. And I thought of the places that he'd been and the people that he's seen and that he was said that and I, you know, I walked out and I said, he's got that all wrong. He's, I'm sure he's met men and women far better Christians than I. But, it, but we're, we're, our testimony is important. Our sharing Christ and taking it just one in time. Chad, Chad, Pastor Chad didn't try, doesn't try to save the world. When he was away, he talked to one couple. And he, remember he said there's a victory? He says, I know there's some other people, or wh whoever they were, a couple or man or woman or whatever. He says, there's real problems, there's a defeat. And it's just one at a time. We go at it. But, there, but the word of God is powerful and is, is victorious. This is our memory verse. The word of God searches our hearts and helps us prepare for the battle. The word of God is living. We've looked at this already. These are just closing little things. The word of God protects us from the onslaught of the enemy as a defensive weapon. And no, I don't take my Bible and hold it up like a literal book. You claim the verses of God. 
Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The word of God is eternal. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word won't. These are all great memory verses. People need to hear these. The lost need to hear these verses. You will be called, you will be questioned, and a question will come your way in your Christian life if you get out into the world, into the culture, and they will ask you questions, and bam, these verses will come to your mind. Memorize them. Okay. It's just a verse. The Word of God searches our hearts and helps us. It pulls down strongholds. Okay, number one, it pulls down strongholds. That's number one. Number two, just write down Hebrews 4.12. It's a living, it searches our hearts. The Word of God searches our hearts. Three, the Word of God protects us, as we've already said to you. Can I go on from there? Yes? Thank you. The Word of God's eternal. Wonderful versus wicked. Remember the temptations? We already looked at these. I already did the words, and I divvied them out, and I, we looked at the Greek, and we did some things like that. But now, let's see. Remember, Jesus answered Satan, it is written, in all three instances. He replied with the word of God. And all three of the temptations that Christ had are basically the three realms that Satan will attack you and get in your mind. So the first one's all about cupcakes for everybody. That was the first temptation. You said, wait a minute. Where's that? I've read my Bible. I've read my version. I don't see cupcakes anywhere. I love cupcakes, don't you? (laughs) Well, then again, I like anything that's got icing on it. The more chocolatey or the better. I can be your friend if you got chocolate. Amen. Forever. (laughs) All right. What's cupcakes for all? Well, Satan comes to Jesus and he says, if you're you're hungry, turn these rocks into bread. Have something to eat. And so what this was all about, it was all in the physical realm. It's all about, I want. It's our wanters. It's for our thing. I want to collect this. I need to buy this. I need to do this. The temptations of the things of this life that we try to buy and to try to satisfy, and we get this in our minds, we've got to have this to be happy. And it'll satisfy that hunger. It'll satisfy rocks that you're looking at, and that you make the, you'll make them bread and say, well, if I just have enough rocks that I can turn to bread, I'll be happy, I'll be fed, I can keep going, I can keep doing. That's the battle Jesus fought. It was the things of pleasure and joys and, oh, I'm really cool because I got all this stuff. And that's, that's bread, that's cupcakes for everybody. Sweets for all. Sweets for all. I do not want to tell you the times that my mother said, if all you eat is, is all you eat is sugar, it will make you sick. Kids don't believe moms the first time. It took me about 10 tries to figure that doing what I was doing, that I mean, she'd make up the cookie batter and she'd go do something and I'd eat half the cookie batter. I didn't feel good after that. It was delicious. It really was. But it, and it just wasn't good. Sweets aren't good for us. Ah, the leap of faith. Jump, I'll catch you. That's what this was about. The leap of this was the second temptation. The devil took him to Jerusalem on the corner of high walls, and he said, hey, jump. The angels will take care of you. Just jump, they'll catch you. Just jump. And this was an attack on emotion and emotional needs, self-esteem, pride, the sins of America, self-esteem. 
we got to make ourselves feel good. we got to give our kids and our grandkids, give them everybody a trophy for playing soccer. They get a participation. The fact that they could walk, if they couldn't walk, if they broke their leg and sat on the bench, they participated. They deserve a trophy. Look at what happened to them. Everybody needs to feel good. Nobody needs to feel bad. Those idiots, those idiots in San Francisco, I read this week, George Washington High School. There's a huge special mural up there that's been put up in parts of Washington. The school system, somebody complained that that makes me feel insecure when I see that picture. It, it hurts me. And they found some others that said that. And the school system put together a panel of 12 people and then another 50 men and women panel they put together to search out and to talk and can this really hurt and this can have effect on students and could this be a problem? And so they have come back and said it needs to come down. It's an offense and it's a hurt. So some students will look at that <coughs> <coughs> and their cupcake is turned back to stone. Their pride, their self-esteem is hurt. And right now the school board has it back in the, and they're deliberating it. You know how it's going to come down. You know how it's going to hit probably. Idiots, idiots on every hand. <coughs> <coughs> Let's go on. Take a knee. Ah, wow, I've heard that. Take a knee. This is the third temptation. Satan said, hey, everything I've shown you, I'll give it to you. Just bow down before me. And the temptation was that, once again, it was all about ego and about, I want to be the king. I just want to be king. I, I, Carol and I were surfing, ran across the Lion King, the movie. And so I watched a little bit. I think she was cooking. Delicious supper. <laughs> it was good. And Simba, the little one, gets in and he starts singing that, and he's the heir to the throne, but he's just a little lion cub. He says, but I just want to be king. That's the name of the song. But I just can't wait. Want, can't wait to be king. That's right. I just can't wait to be king. And he's saying, I have it all then. Wow. Okay, wisdom to win. To defeat the enemy in the battle, we have to be skillful with the word of God. So what do we do with it? To win spiritual battles, we need to read, study the words of God, and we need to learn how to use them by memorizing, by reading. In my Bible, when I run across a verse that I think is uh, either memorized or I think it's terrific, I will take a, a red uh, colored pencil and I'll just shade it in. I don't, I, I try, don't use magic marker, it bleeds through your, I would not do that at all. But just shade it in, just shade it. So you can find it, if you haven't memorized, you could start flipping through it, you could find it. There have been times I've been leading someone to the Lord and sharing Christ with them that I, all of a sudden I'm lost. Or they ask a question and I know the answer to that, but where's, I know what book it's in. And so I have to go flipping through but guess what? I've highlighted it, and I find it, where other times I, haven't, I don't. The Bible says to do your best to present yourself to God as an approved workman that doesn't need to be shamed who correctly handles the word of truth. It means we got to work on this stuff. I have to say, say, say something to you right now. I ain't got it all down. I don't have it all down. I don't, know all the, I don't know all the verses that are the right tools. I just, I just don't have a toolbox of scripture that I go over and bam, it's got the answers to everything. And I know the answers to it all. I'm traveling, I'm, I'm somewhere where you, where, where you are. We're all somewhere. And today, we need to move off of today's somewhere and, and take a step a little bit further. Claim another victory. Get a victory over something in our life. Do something. Let the word of God change us. Now, Carol put this together. So, this is hers. 
and I ask her, what, as a librarian, how would you steer us to things of Word of God? And then I'm going to close with something that I, I put down yesterday on the very end. You don't have this, so you're going to want to write it. Okay, so first of all, read through your Bible. And that's one of the things I, I'll just go ahead and add some of the stuff I've said. Read through your Bible. You don't have to read through it in a solid year, but you can get online and you can find a reading program that you started today and in one year from day you could finish the Word of God. If you read five chapters a day, you'd finish it a little early. That I could say to you. But you need to read it, and those guides are available in bookstores. Our library would have things. Just go in and sit down in a reference area of our church library, and you'd find some neat stuff there. There's some really good stuff. Read individual books intensely. See, if you're reading the Bible through, you sort of got to, you've got to read your four or five chapters a day, whatever's assigned. But, but you can read it through and don't have to feel you've got to do it in a year. Just start reading it. And I'll com come back and comment on that in a bit. Read, read individual books in the Bible. If you're, if you're new at this, do not start in Revelation, please. <laughs> because you'll be on the phone to me or emailing me. Don't go there. If you're brand new at this, <coughs> read John. Just read John. Get to know Jesus in John. Just read John. It's, get to know Jesus. And go slow. And get to know Jesus. But find a book. If you're further along in the Christian faith, you say, well, I haven't read that book. Sit down and just go slowly and just read it and stop. And think about it verse at a verse and say, okay, do I, first of all, do I understand this? Number two, Lord, what do I do with it? And you might not hear anything. You might need to read the whole chapter before you get a picture. And let God's word speak to you. Plan your Bible reading to include certain books. Memorize key verses. There's a lot of printed Bible studies out there. If you're in one of our men's or women's Bible studies, uh, Women of the Word, and some of the Wednesday night things that we have, there usually is a, a booklet that goes along with the study. Sometimes you're reading a book, but there's a booklet. Sometimes you're doing the book of the Bible, and there's a booklet that goes with it. Okay, there are lots of printed things out there that are fill in the blanks or just cool things. And these are reputable publishers most of the time. Tyndale House, Word, they're on the spine of the book, down low usually, or open it up to the first page. Zondervan, and of course the incredible worldwide Baker Books <laughs> Company. InterVarsity, Erisman's, Moody Press, that's just a few. That's a good start. You know, I, sometimes once a year, maybe, I go to the Christian bookstore. <clears throat> Go by myself. Where? I go down to the down where the old Pinellas Square Mall was. They reopened. Oh, they reopened. They reopened. They reopened. Oh, yeah, call, call though, check it out. Yeah, they've been open a couple months. Reopened. Okay, new owner came in. Give it a try. I drove by. Yeah, I drove by maybe a month and a half ago, and they were open. But go in and just, just walk. And, just, and I always go to the Bible, the reference sections, and just see what people are writing about. What's going on? What, who, this company and certain authors, what are they doing? And you can use these things. And you have this all written out. I want to go to the end because I have a, a video to share with you. And I appreciate Carol doing this. She put a lot of thought into this. You can use the Bible. You have it next to you to help. Okay. There's, I'll go ahead and tell you this. I don't mind telling you this whatsoever. A lot of this Greek that you get, not all of it, but a lot of this Greek that you get, I started and I ran across. It's called the Linguistic Guide of the New Testament. It is a, it is a nasty, hard, you don't want to read, you don't read it for devotions, but it gets into 
the, the Greek and the, and the translation of, that, of certain words in that verse. It just goes through the, just goes through the, the New Testament. And a lot of my studies, it starts there, but then I go on to do other things. They say, I know where, where you are. You don't teach Jubilee. <laughs> you may teach somewhere else, but I tell you what, God's called, you, nobody else, Shane teaches Jubilee. But that, that's, that's what God's called us to do and God's called me to do primarily. I don't, go, I don't teach another class right now. I don't. I don't know that I would. I'm having to, this is a handful in itself. It's not you are a handful. It, the work, the prep, the battle, the time, the effort, the energy, and it's exciting. It's a blessing. It's incredible. But there's great things to find. And here's some, I, I like MacArthur. Carol and I both like MacArthur, John MacArthur. Sco, I have a Schofield Reference Bible. Here's some new stuff that's out. But this is for me. This is brand new. You don't have this. I wanted to put my thoughts on this and close with it, and I'm going to have time. We're in great shape. Every day, if you're not doing anything, you want, you want some direction, you want to do, every day, read one psalm, read one proverb, and read one chapter out of the book of Acts. Or on the first day, read a psalm. The second day, read Proverbs 1. And the third day, read Acts 1. Then you're back into the cycle on the 4th, 5th, and 6th of the month or the time period, and just rotate. But if you do this, if you read Psalms, I read a Psalm so that I learn how to get along with God. Think about it. What's Psalms about? Da David wrote most of them. Lord, I love you. I pray. How could he say that? Because in the Psalms, God says, I love you. I have... And David says, Lord, your mercy is great. How does he know that? Because God has given mercy to him. And he read it, and he sees that. It's a father to a son speaking. It's the, our heavenly father to his sons and daughters, you and me's, that he speaks to us and shares. And we get to know God, and we get to know how to praise him and worship him and, and, and the things of God. You just get to, you'll get to know God better. Number two, read the Proverbs. It'll teach you how to get along with man. Do you ever get contrary? <coughs> Anybody stubborn sort of in here? You have a str stubborn streak into you? Anybody here says, I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it? And how you want to do it. Amen. <laughs> I'll tell you this. I understand aging all of a sudden. That I'll tell you, I get to the point, I met a pastor who's younger than me, and he was 65 or something. And I said, you, you do, and you, you say some really tough stuff. And, you, and I said, can I use this word? That I'll use the word, you get an attitude and about you, and you, just, and, and you just keep going. And he says, I've reached the point of my life, nobody can hurt me. And I'm thinking... That's sad that he got to that point that he just says, fine, I'm going to be how I am and I'm not going to change. They can like me or lump me. They can take it or they can leave it. And we can't, see, this gets us to learn how to get along with man. And all these principles in. Acts is how to get along in our church. So, there. Read through the Bible. This is me. If you're going to read, this, I, I would suggest this just as a rethink for everything. And this is for somebody that, you've, you're, that you are Dr. Fahrenheit. Because, and you know, you've been to Bible college and seminary and cemetery. And you've been to all that stuff. And you know all of it. And you've got Hebrew and Greek and, and Aramaic oozing out of your pockets and your purse. Okay, you've you got it all. Here's a, or, or you're here today and say, I don't know nothing. Okay, get your Bible out and start at Genesis 1-1. And start reading and write down on a, have a sheet of paper and write down the verses, just the reference of the verses, verses you've memorized. 
shade them in and red colored pencil or any color you want and go on. Write down every verse you'd like to memorize and come back to. God will speak to your heart. It won't be the whole book. It might be a dozen. In some other books, it'll be more. In others, maybe nothing or one or two. But write down every verse you'd like to memorize just on the side, and you're going to come back to it, or you're going to start one that day and work on that. Number three, on another sheet of paper, write down the verses or the verse sections you just don't get. And now, now what can you do about that? You can pray that the Holy Spirit leads you, or you can ask somebody. Now, in doing so, what is happening if I have to, if I have to come and I have to come to Shanholzer's and say, hey, I need some advice from you. Too. I, let's, this verse is bothering me. What do you think? We're, they're going to sit down, they're going to open the Word of God, or I am with them. And we're going to start sharing the word of God and we're going to start growing together. And all of a sudden, growing isn't just what I do with the book. It's what we do really as a group. I get lots of questions. I have, I have one guy that sends me questions all the time. He's a pastor. He says, what, what do I do? What do we do this? And here I'll have a verse. He'll say, Expl-. Shane will send me a, a question and say, what's your take on this verse? on this section. He's getting ready to go share it possibly with somebody or he just might want to know. And he's not, and he has, I have no problem because sometimes I don't have the answer at my hands and I'm saying, good grief, he's writing that to me. I've got to look cool in his eyes. I better find a good answer. <laughs> and so it makes me scramble with the word of God and sometimes there's discussion back and forth on the internet. Sometimes there's not. Sometimes we talk verbally. But all of a sudden now the word of God is being spoken and there's interaction and the word of God is at work in our lives. Now I'm a simple person and this is pretty simple. You don't look at it saying I've got to go through that whole book. No you don't. You have to go through Genesis 1-1. Then guess what? That's a victory. Go to verse 2. Go to verse 3. And at your own speed, go through the word of God and let it live again or live in your life for the first time. I, amen. Amen. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And it will pierce. Lord Jesus, you are wonderful. Thank you for your word.